Hello and welcome back to another video in our 2023 Texas signing class position by position group breakdowns today. Tommy Yarish here with Hudson Standish talking about the running backs. Hudson, two good ones brought in the number one running back in the nation in Cedric Baxter and then a state champion in Trey Wisner. What are your overall thoughts on the hall for Tashar Choices group in Steve Sarkeesian's class? Yeah, Tommy, simply put, I think it's the perfect roster construction method for Texas in the 23 cycle. You need somebody that's going to place B. John Robinson long term. You get that guy in, you know, to shard choices, you know, personal favorite in Cedric Baxter, who is going to come in and legitimately challenge for starter minutes in his first year, even though we all know how good Jonathan Brooks is. And then in Trey Wisner, you get really a great complimentary back that I think adds a different element than the Texas running back room has as far as just his maybe not as much speed and acceleration, but just his elusiveness and his just, you know, know how to get extra yards as a runner and a receiver. Let's go ahead and start with Cedric Baxter. We mentioned the number one running back in the country combines a powerful running scheme to a four or five speed Hudson, where do you see his skill transitioning to the collegiate level the best? It, uh, Tommy, to be completely honest, I think he does everything well. In the modern recruiting era where running back value has been diminished as much as it is, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a guy that people are willing to give five stars, essentially saying this guy we project to be a first-round pick. So he does everything well, and I think that's why – from the jump to shard choice when he got to campus, even though Ruben Owens was in state, really circled Baxter as his guy because he has that 6'1", 220 frame. We know that he's great off the field. He brings everything as that you want as a runner. He can stick on the field for all three downs. It really is just replacing Bijan Robinson, a former five-star running back, with the number one recruit, uh, the number one running back in the country, and somebody that they have truly, you know sky is the limit type of uh, vibes for Baxter. I, I think that he's going to make an impact in, during this season, and it's going to be just up to him on, you know, how good he actually is uh, while he's at Texas. Uh, we talked about Baxter being the number one running back in the country, but also from Edgewater High School out in Orlando. So an out-of-state win for Steve Sarkeesian and company. And with that in mind, Florida State made a strong push Towards the buzzer for towards the buzzer, excuse me, for Baxter, but to Sharp Choice and Company end up winning. Hudson, what went into that final stretch for Texas and what was the difference maker to get Baxter's signature? Look, Tommy, I know I'm going to start sounding redundant, but it was that personal relationship with Deshard Choice and the fact that he trusted Steve Sarkeesian's scheme to get him to the league. I think the stat is that since 2011, Steve Sarkeesian, as a head coach or an offensive coordinator, hasn't had a rusher go under 1,000 yards. They know that they're going to run the rock at Texas. And even though I think that if Choice wasn't at Texas, he probably does end up at Florida State, even with all of the advantages of Choice's personal relationship, that being his guy, and Steve Sarkeesian's offense, Florida State came pretty close based on the you know fantastic season that the Knowles had down there in Tallahassee. Speaking of fantastic seasons, Trey Wisner had a pretty good season over at DeSoto. He transferred from Waco Connolly to the Golden Eagles to play his senior season, and then they won the Texas 6A state championship. Put up a good mix of rushing and receiving yards in his senior season to go along with 11 offensive touchdowns. What stands out about Wisner on film? Yeah, I think it's kind of what you hinted at with the versatility. A lot of times he was being lined up as a true slot receiver because – to be frank, early on in the season, they had trouble getting him going because they had Tiger Ryden in the 25 class, who's kind of the established guy, recently picked up a Texas offer. And Wisner just moved in, so it was kind of tough to establish him. They really find a, a smart idea moving him out to the slot, getting him in motion for touch passes, you know, throwing him true speed outs. And I think that was kind of the key for DeSoto on offense during their playoff run, kind of putting all of the pieces together. And I think Wisner will bring some of that same versatility to Texas. 
I want to continue talking about his versatility here. As we mentioned, he played some wide receiver in high school down the stretch. Do you think that this is maybe a guy that we can watch out for to potentially make the move to wide receiver if the staff sees his skill set fill out that way? Well, Tommy, we just saw that uh, they had an opposite type of move where Savion Red moved from wide receiver to running back. So could <laughs> Wisner maybe – complete the trade and go from to shard choices room to uh, Chris Jackson's. I don't know. I, I lean no, just because of the amount of talent that they're kind of stacking in the wide receiver group. I'm not sure that makes the most sense, but it's definitely a conversation worth having. And you mentioned moving Savion Red over to running back. That just increases the names on the depth chart. So now Jonathan Brooks, Keelan Robinson, and Jaden Blue alongside Savion Red for Tashar Choice. You add in Cedric Baxter and Trey Wisner now. So when you look at this depth chart heading into the season, who do you think are the guys that could really start to scratch the top of the list and get the, get the most carries at the start of the season? I kind of mentioned it in the uh, first answer, Tommy, but I'm just going to say it again. I do think that Baxter has a legitimate shot to be running back one or around that level alongside Jonathan Brooks. And we know how dynamic and you know explosive Keelan Robinson is in that kind of gadget type role. Maybe Keelan has a little bit of an expanded role and gets more traditional carries. But at the same time, I do think that in the Alamo Bowl, maybe you saw a little bit of, okay, Keelan maybe makes more sense as our gadget type player while Brooks was really when the running game started going. We'll keep an eye on that running back step chart as the spring football season begins here shortly. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode of our 2023 Texas position group by position group breakdown, talking the running backs. Huge thanks to Hudson Standish for joining us today. Be sure to come back on the Horns 24-7 YouTube channel, like this video, and subscribe for all the latest content coming out, especially with spring practice season coming up. We're going to have a lot coming your way for that as well. And be sure to head to horns247.com for more insight from our great crew as always for Hudson I'm Tommy Yar saying thanks for watching and we'll see you next time